You got any fireworks around here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Community Service with Craig Conant. <laughs> and I'm doing well. And I have some gigs. I'm coming, baby, to uh, where are we going? St. Louis, uh, Missouri, Edmonton, Canada, Alameda, California, Philadelphia, California. I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> Pennsylvania, you silly goose. Should I do another one? Oh, f off. No. <laughs> Austin, Texas, uh, August 26th, 27th. Let's sell out Austin, guys. I made a lot of money last year and it all went to my mouth. So I need to, Austin, let's make some money, boys. Yeah. Yeah. This is the worst intro in the history of intros. <laughs> this is me. Come on, guys. Go to my show. I need to pay for my teeth. <laughs> what comedian plugs their shows like that? Be professional, Craig. <laughs> hey, come on. I need a new tooth. Go to my show. <laughs> you guys like knives? What kind? I'm, ne I'm never going to be a household name. I plug knives and drugs. They're never going to let me in. <laughs> These fucking <laughs> you know? I don't want to be a household. I want to be back though, little Joe, you know? What's that even mean? I don't know. I heard it in a hip-hop song once. Boy. Boy, boy, this is the weirdest. This I always say this, but now this might be true. This is the weirdest intro I've ever had. <laughs> You're unraveling, Craig. It's okay. I love you all. Tune into this one. It's a good one. I promise. We talk about knives. No, we don't. A little bit. Mainly upward stuff. Yeah. Hey, boo. That's this. That's this podcast. We're podcasting, boo. Oh, are we starting? Nice. Good timing. She just bit me. Welcome to Community Service Podcast, where I get bit by my cat in the first second. How are you? Oh, my God. I got some notes for you, boo. My cat is just off as her rocker. His today. Yeah. <laughs> um, ouch. She's biting me. She fell off the desk and knocked over some equipment. And then landed on her back, and no one was around, and she was on a flat surface. <laughs> she may have stepped on the computer mouse to my new computer. Shout out to Apple for changing the ports in the back to where I have to buy all new jacks. You're crooks. You go fuck yourself. <laughs> you Haven't you made enough money? No. You know they're making stuff like that illegal in Europe. Did I already say this last time? Yes, yeah. You did. I get so angry because I have to buy them, and I look at my Apple, and I look at my old Apple, that has all the ports. Mm -hmm. And I look at my new Apple that does not have all the ports. But it could. Yeah. But it could. <laughs> and it used to. And now it doesn't. Apple, go fuck yourself. Steve Jobs, you're dead already, but go fuck yourself. <laughs> Thanks for creating a great pot product. Product. I said product. I'm on a podcast. But, uh, yeah, you're kind of evil too. I heard you did some slave labor shit with... Uh, nets i don't really know <laughs> i'm not over there but it's america you made a good product you know i gotta <laughs> buy it i gotta buy it my country's built on that shit mister's coming in oh we got cat power today come on come on mister craig conan lord of the cats call me cat man <laughs> yeah that's right we're in a new age new era we got new things going on i got a cat man pussy <laughs> <laughs> they used to say pussy cat now they say Cat man pussy? <laughs> hey, you ever heard of cat man do? <laughs> we are going off the rails already. I missed my flight. I saw that. I dropped I drop my notes. <laughs> I cannot do this. First time I ever did stand up at an open mic, this one open mic, maybe the second time I dropped my notes and they floated away. And I went, ah, oh, my jokes. Only laugh I got. <laughs> she's off her rocker <laughs> hey and then uh hang on where's it going this cat it's got fart breath oh you missed your flight oh yes are we starting there we're starting there get off me okay i have to tell a story that no one will ever believe and I didn't even tell the club this because I was like, they won't believe me. So I just manned up and just said I missed my flight because I slept in, which was true. But they, it was, and it was uh, technology. My phone, my phone didn't go off. 
I set three alarms. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not even high. Am I high? No, I just woke up from a nap. Damn it, I should be high. That's why I'm dropping stuff. I'm off my game. Don't worry, I got some THC lemonade that left of me. 100 milligram bottle. Who's counting? I am. <laughs> it's so good. I have a problem. I'm an addict. Have you guys ever had THC lemonade? Because here on Community Service Podcast, I tell kids to do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Don't do drugs, kids. This isn't a drug. This is jungle juice. Want some? Ugh. No. Ugh. Cannabis infused beverage. So how many milligrams do you think that was? I I don't know. Enough? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? Chris, you don't ask questions. I heard uh, Ron White. I love Ron White. I've, I've had the lucky been to a few shows with him i he he drinks a lot i don't know if he remembers my name but he'll be like hey that guy you know <laughs> uh but he uh recently oh man i'm all over the place hang on full formulated thoughts why did i start talking about i know why where, where i'm going i just don't remember why i started talking about this anyways ron white quit drinking he's 16 18 months sober if anybody knows who ron white is the man, the man went to the comedy clubs with a wooden box of high quality, top tier tequila shit, five hundred thousand dollars a bottle, always, and and just he, that's his brand, that's his brand, and he quit, and he uh, he went to a hypnotist, he went to do ayahuasca. Oh man, this is bugging me so much. I know what story I'm telling. I just don't remember why I'm telling it, and it's driving me nuts in my manic head. We were talking about you missing your flight, and then technology. Uh, you said don't ask questions, or we don't ask questions, something like that. And then you, it's like a spark went off. Oh, Ron White. That's right. I remember now. Because the reason I thought of him, he was talking about eating mushrooms, and they asked him how much did he take, and he looked at him. He's like, a handful. He, like you know, he's like, I don't weigh it out, man. He's like, about that much, <laughs> and it just made me love him and respect him. And it's the way my father is. He reminds me of my dad, just a crazy old white drunk <laughs> with some fucking gasoline blood, just like fuck you, dude. You know, and uh, and it just made me laugh because that's how I live my life too. You know, like. You, that's funny you just asked me but i'm just like i don't know <laughs> you just drink until you go uh-oh uh-oh oops the daisy <laughs> we're here <laughs> and then it's too late and then you have to i like to make my day scary i've talked about this before yeah. but i want to drink that in the morning and be like oh shit how do i operate now how do i have that meeting I was supposed to have. How do I buy oatmeal at Target? <laughs> Boy, this is going to be hard. And you're either, you, what's crazy is sometimes I drank that shit. I went to the airport. I was, pop, 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 I, not like that. I don't, I don't want to get arrested, you know. <laughs> but I just mean I was funny, bro. I made the lady checking my bags in laugh. Like we laugh. I was like, this is a good one, huh? <laughs> and we were cracking up. Um, I was making fun of the guy next to her because he looked coked up. And I was just like, somebody's had their morning coffee. I was like, <laughs> or something a little extra. Because he's like, ah, yeah, ah. And he looked like a little frightened red-eyed chihuahua, you know? And she looked over it and we just fell out laughing. She's like, yeah, he's a little high strung, isn't he? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I seen him for 12 seconds and I was like, that guy's on coke. <laughs> go, go. Wow. And then I made fun of some lady's big booty or something. And I was like, and then we did a fist bump. <laughs> I was like, that's what's up. I'm just a customer, you know. <laughs> you should tip me. No, she was so sweet. I I love the anyone working at airline, my heart goes out to you. The monsters you deal with on a daily basis. And if you're being a piece of shit to the customer too, realize they're they're going through hell on earth. But if they come at you hot, I get it. I get it. Denied. <laughs> denied. You come uh, denied. Oh, you sweet. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. <laughs> Free bag for you. Denied. Not for your son. He looked at me wrong. Different flights. <laughs> no soup for you. Oh, I have to finish the Ron White uh, sober story, but that's not where we're going. Don't let me forget that. Where's the notes? I got it right here. Um, Look how dyslexic I am. I know how to spell Ron. R-N-O. <laughs> I try to tell motherfuckers. Sometimes I'll start writing the middle word in the middle of the sentence and I have to go like back here. It's like, I think this is a joke. It's very hard to function in life. Yeah. When you're dyslexic and ADHD, but undiagnosed, I just figured it out why I was a drug addict for about 15 years. <laughs> it's because I was undiagnosed. I just need some help. You know, what are you going to do? I chose drugs. I named Papa didn't raise no bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'll self-medicate. How about a handful, <laughs> God? That sounds good. <laughs> I almost reached for that one. You could. That's the. I don't think I could do anything. I don't even sugar. You know, I get one taste. I was off sugar for so long. One cookie and the vampire's blood comes in and you go like, I am I already feel a little goosed, you know. My voice is already starting to change. You can tell the weed's kicking <laughs> in. He's turning into a cartoon. But then I, I go, but you could be more goosed. You, you're not scary goosed. <laughs> You're, not, you're just slightly goosed. Ron White, sober story. RNO? Who's RNO? Shout out to all my functioning ADHDs and dyslexias out there functioning, killing life. <laughs> we just start weeping. <laughs> I guess I'll just do that story. Why am I writing it down? Hello, Helen. Stop shaking your head at me, Chris. <laughs> this guy just shakes his head at me. I look at him for moral support. He's like, oh my, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what your brain's thinking. I don't even know what my brain's thinking. How do you think I feel? <laughs> Ron White's health wasn't, and this is coming out of his mouth. I'm not talking shit. Just look up his clip. We'll provide the link right here. He said it twice on Rogan and Tom Segura. I liked it personally better on the Tom Segura. We'll provide both links. And it's his story on how he got sober after 50 years, 5-0 of being, a, that's my couch. Ah, oh, I should have got the insurance. It constantly haunts me. The roof leaked on it. Now there's a little water stain right there. Mr. Cat gets that one. Boo gets this. <laughs> Boo. Oh, whatever. It's just... It's just furniture, man. <laughs> just, ow! That's my hand. It's just expensive furniture. Is that on camera? Probably. Yeah. Nice. Anyways, Ron White had... Uh, he saw his future. He saw some people that were older than... Uh, uh, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Come on, man. You need a Band-Aid? No, I'm all right. <laughs> um... Oh, I got blood on the couch. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Is this not the entertainment you all wanted? Craig Conant bleeds for the fans. Um, oh, yeah, maybe give me a tissue. I'm going to get blood everywhere. And, uh, boy, it's hard to talk about when, what, for remember what you're talking about when you're bleeding. I'm just kidding. It's a prick. It's a prick. My cat's a prick. He uh he saw his neighbors at some beach house uh drinking and they were older and uh just a little toilet paper. I that's all I need. Yeah, a little shit ticket. Thank you. And uh he saw his future and he's like, ah uh, I can't he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna die, you know. He's like, I got to get out. And he had been to rehab a bunch before, and he says he went to rehab, and it was like $100,000 a month. He did it a bunch of times, and the longest he ever got sober was like six months. And he's like, I'm a half a mil in the rehab, and all I got to show for it is six months. So he said this dude, somebody recommended him a, a hypnotist. And he said this guy was weird. And he said he doesn't know if it was part of the gag or what, but he's wearing like a wig, and it was like crooked, like obvious, you know, like we, like we we're like, 
You're like, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> you're the guy? And he said that was, you're in a garage, and you're like this old chair that must have been there for 30 years. And then he's like, but the guy's good. He's like, I was under. And, he, and, like, and he had to do his thing. And then he said, the guy was like, don't even worry about quitting drinking. Don't worry. And then, uh, and then Ron says, like, oh, yeah, you're good. I like this. I like this rehab, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then he said after the second session, he just quit. And, it, and he, and, you know, he's like, I, this is in my DNA. This is my brand, my blood. I'm famous for it. That's what I do. I'm addicted. I literally, before I got, I had to go to the hospital to deal with withdrawals and take pills. And he's like, I didn't have the shakes. I didn't have anything. He actually says something. He's like, it made me think about what were in those pills. He's like, why did I have the shakes the first six times? Because I took the pills the first six times. And the last time, I didn't take the pills. For a sixth time, I had the shakes, last one. and then, But he got scared, too. He's like, I don't want to make any false accusations against Big Pharma, uh, but it's weird, you know? And he's got no proof, but he's like, it may, you know? And he's eating the mushrooms. He's asking questions now. No, he's always been into mushrooms. That guy's a fucking badass. And he, uh, yeah, and then he, he went, oh, sorry, he was getting in, he was getting sober, to do ayahuasca, and he uh, wanted to do ayahuasca first, but they wouldn't take him because he was honest with the amount of drugs and alcohol he did. And they're like, "We can't do it on you. You, we're not built for you. You might, you got to detox. You might die and shit. Like we're, we're not a hospital, man. Yeah. Like, so that's why he had to get sober. I forgot that part. So he saw the, then saw the hypnotist, got sober, and then did ayahuasca. And now I want to do the same shit. I want to see this hips. hips hmm, hang on. <laughs> We're not seeing them yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to see the hypnotist. See? That's just li this little taste, bro. I'm not a psychopath. <laughs> and uh, I want to see the hypnotist. And then this stuff's the problem. How I get addicted to it is I drank this and I've never been so smiley, happy, and giggly. And now I'm like, this makes me happy. I want this all the time. If I don't have it, sad, sad, sad. I don't want to be sad. Happy juice. And then you just become a fucking addict, you know? I know it's weed. It doesn't count. But with other stuff, it does. It fucking does. And even that can ruin your life. You know, I'm not in a real studio. I'm in my fucking <laughs> leaky roof bedroom. Maybe if I wasn't drinking that on my podcast, I'd have a real studio at a high-rise office. <laughs> soundproof insulation air conditioning but no there's two cats at my feet and two computers because i don't know if i uploaded all my old stuff correctly yet i hate technology i love it. i get to, to technology i love it i get to bleed i get to bleed <laughs> <laughs> just it's just i still love you it's okay come back here here throw this away i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Craig's really mean to Chris. I bet you I made that. Did I? No. Oh. I couldn't see the community. Anyways. So he went to Ayahuasca. And he uh, watched both versions of the story, though. Because he tells it the same, but differently. And there's different details in each that I found uh, helpful. But he said, basically, in a nutshell, what it did for him is it allowed him to forgive all that shit he'd been carrying all these years was just resent, hate, you know, rage, anger, whatever, and uh, negative energy. And it just told him to, it taught, because he said the first night he went to hell. And he, he they said, if you see the, the clouds, they're fighting, cats are fighting. If you see the clouds and the rainbows and you see the dark forest with all the hell, they're like, go to darkness. That's where you heal and rebirth. And so he went to the dark side, and he said it was awful. But he said ayahuasca is like a light switch. This is also what made me want to do it, because it's a timer. When it's over, it's over. It's not like acid. You take acid in the morning, and you're like, oh, shit, who made this? It's lasting 18 hours. I can't even sleep. You know, but everything's funny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes you get shit. It's so strong. Anyways, it, it, he said it shuts off like a light switch, and... Uh, and then the and then it was easy streets after that and it was all love. He said he went through hell 
and they said that he he did he dealt what he had to dealt with night one and then he had a rebirth he said other people were not so lucky he's like some of them had like hell like happy happy joy joy and then the last night they had like hell like he said this one lady like it was like you know like <laughs> and i guess she was working through some horrific trauma of something awful that had been through been she had been through but then he said like light switch the ayahuasca turned off and she went from basically looking like someone was trying to murder her like screaming and and it was bad they said they had to tie her down because they were afraid she was going to hurt someone or herself it was so bad and they stayed with her and calmed her down and then and then she calmed down and then the ayahuasca turned off and then she was happy and smile ear to ear and had she forgave the horrible shit she went through he wouldn't say what it was which i'm you know it's probably the worst shit poor lady and it helped her and it healed her and he's telling me all these stories and he's like most everybody came out there healed up pretty good you know um it doesn't work for everybody because i know a lot i know a lot of people that have done it and most all of them come back with some benefit some not that much you're gonna get something out of it 10 you know but some motherfuckers he said like with him and her he said she was a different person you know um and and uh yeah i can only imagine people have so many traumas they have to work through it's like fuck it's like and even people who have good childhoods you know they're boring i don't want to i don't I don't want to not have to go do ayahuasca, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get to do ayahuasca. I get to heal. I get to be tor- tortured. <laughs> <laughs> I get to. <sighs> and that's Ron White's story. And I'm fascinated with it. Now, I love that motherfucker. I want to emulate and be like him. I want my own jet. That motherfucker has his own jet. Damn. I'm, well... He's a blue collar guy too. I was like, that just seems excess. But we'll see. I get there. <laughs> I want two jets. One for my wife, one for my ex wife. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's some Texas shit. He was talking. Ron White has had so many wives. He's so funny. He says that too. He's like, I forgave every motherfucker except for one divorce lawyer. He got me. <laughs> and I <I'm> just <laughs> laugh. <laughs> He's like, that piece of shit. And I was, it's so funny. I was like, oh, you need one more ayahuasca run. Oh, man, what a legend that dude is. It's also a trip that Rogan, he was on Rogan, and Rogan's like this. Like, he's the legend on Rogan. That's the power of Ron White. Wow. Okay, Mohegan Sun missed my goddamn flight. Finish that story. I remember, see, the THC and kicked in. Yeah. Four alarms, th- three alarms, one timer. Three alarms, one timer. I sleep next to my lady, Sadie. I swear on my life, none of them went off. None of them went off. I woke up too late. I woke up 20 minutes past my flight. I went, uh, like you knew, you know, like home yeah. alone. Kevin, like you just know. I was like, ah, oh. text, text the bosses, managers, Houston, we have a problem. Missed the flight. Thank God I'm gold status. Delta, you are the shit. I cannot stress this enough. I don't care how many horror stories you have. I've had nothing but pleasant shit. Of all the airlines, Delta is tried and true. I chose them. I'm gold status, and they continue to hook it up. No fee, no nothing. The lady I was on, I have a gold number now, and not I'm not I'm not Gen Pop. I'm Gen Pop. Everything else, but not Delta. <laughs> not Delta. You fucking peasants. <laughs> you peedly little poor people. I get free check bags because I'm rich. <laughs> Isn't that ass backwards? Huh? Huh? No. Yes. Yes. You were rich. Yes, I speak it into against the existence. Against it. I'm against myself. I can't even speak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I call five minutes. No way. No way. She's like, oh, no problem. I'm so sorry. Like, yeah, we'll hook it up. And she was so sweet. And she fixed it. I got on the next flight. Obviously missed the show. Oh, no, that was awful. I felt sick. You just feel bad. Uh, flew to New York. The homie Emma Wilman, hilarious. She's done the pod. I love her. She hooked it up. She's like, crash at my apartment. I'll crash at my girlfriend's. She saved me. And if I wouldn't, if she wouldn't have saved me, I would have spent four hundred dollars on a hotel because 
Even the tweaker motels outside the city were three fifty. I'm not doing that. I'll pay four twenty and get the one in the city. It was it, New York. Why is the Hampton Inn five hundred dollars? That's supposed to be the fair one. <laughs> That's supposed to be, bro, a nice one. They were like twelve hundred dollars a night. I'm like, what? What is this mortgage? What's happening here? <laughs> Anyways, Emma Wilman, you saved me. I love you, and you're so fucking funny and the sweetest. That's the best. When someone's hilarious and a great person, double win. And then uh, Justin Hoff, he's hilarious. A great. He helped me out so much too. That poor bastard. He was supposed to pick me up in New York. So the gig was fly to New York, and logistics was all fucked. So I was supposed to fly there just because it was the cheapest, most convenient direct flight. And then Justin was doing a night in New York, picking me up, and then we're going to do the gigs in Connecticut. And then I wasn't there. So I made him go to New York and do gigs for no reason, and I felt awful. <laughs> <laughs> but if, of course, I mean, hey, no, I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, that's what you get, bitch. <laughs> like, you stay there. You stay in New York. And then uh, get to the Uncasville, Connecticut, which is the funniest city ever. And it ha it's a funny name. And even people in Connecticut make fun of it. So I can. Relax, Connecticutians. Yeah, that's a word. I looked it up. Did it. I did it. And, uh, but it was at this casino that is so nice. This Mohegan Sun Casino. I was like, okay, we did an Encore Wind guy design this? It was just like uh, 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 that mosaic tile art everywhere, colorful gardens, flowers. I took a picture next to a tree. I, I got to put it right here. And, uh, um, they had an arena. They had Lionel Richie. They had Lionel Richie in the arena, Chris. <laughs> How am I going to sell tickets next to Lionel Richie? It's it's Lionel <laughs> Richie, man. Oh, not long. How the who? What? They messed. What? They set me up, man. <laughs> no, this gig was lovely. Uh, but it was it was. It was summer. The what? It's Connecticut. It was summer. The, the the weather was beautiful. The weather was beautiful. It was like like seventy nine, eighty. No humidity with just enough breeze. You were like just hot, just cool. It was like the most perfect. I was like, this is better than L A. This is the most perfect weather I've ever had. You're not sweating, but you're warm. But there's just a little breeze that keeps you cool too. It was quite the combo. I was like, what the fuck? Here you're either too hot or just like I'm by the beach. That wind. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God. So good weather and Lionel Richie. And it was a Bellator fight, a fight. And it was gay pride in those drag queen shows. This is what I'm competing against. <laughs> I want. I, was, I, I mean, of course, I, I love work. But I was just like, why don't you hire a gay comedian, comedian for pride in my head? Because the drag queens are getting all big, big, big plot breaks out there. It was just funny. I was on stage, like in those drags. There's so many shows in the casino too, by the way. There was just, there was a rock band over here. There was drag queens behind me, doing a show. There's Lionel over here, and there's a fight over here. I was like, how many? And then the, that's not even all the shows. That was in the nearby circumference. This is a big casino. The arena sat like twelve thousand or something. It was insane. It was a good time. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like, I was going up against a lot, and. uh you know, there weren't that many butts in seats is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's what the fuck I'm saying. I get to perform the empty seats. <laughs> um, no, nah, it still was a good time. I got heckled and it fucked me up. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Let me finish the whole casino story. This guy th fucked me up. I judge a book by its cover, too, because, ah, oh, fuck it. We'll just go into it. He looked like gangster. You know, he had that walrus, you know, the large white tee, tats. I know my fucking people. And uh, and then I do a lot of I was doing some gay jokes, it was gay pride, you know. And I was doing this butthole joke, and he was like, "Oh, he pulled." He's like, I, "He did one of those enough with the buttholes, man." But you know, I was like, "Oh fuck, he looked like that." And you say it, you know, it's it it if it it, 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 it shook it shakes you a little bit, you know. And I was I was ripping it too. That's what's fucked up. So then I was like, "Oh fuck," and then I but then I'm a I'm a I'm. I'm a firecracker, you know? So what I, I can't let him win. So I just start making fun of him. <laughs> I was like, well, you, I said like, well, you a, hom a homophobe now? Cause you got locked up and somebody, somebody got you bro. <laughs> or something, you know? And then he starts getting angry. And I'm like, oh no. And I start calling him a butthole. 
It's called on butthead. I just keep saying butthole everywhere because he keeps trying to talk. I was like, what's that, butthole? You know? And he's like, uh, butthole. And I was like, hey, butthole. <laughs> butthole. And I just going, hey, butthole. And I just going, butthole, butthole, butthole. And I'm fucking cracking up. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this guy's going to stab me. This guy's going <laughs> to stab me, dude. And then, uh, and then I, we, we squash it. Or I made it way worse. I made it way bigger <laughs> than it ever needed to be. But I was like, fuck you. And it was funny. It was kind of funny. It, all, it was... It, the tent it was in a little tense nobody would back down you know i got the microphone butthole and then uh but then i had to go back to my act and keep going you know that's just hard after that <laughs> so i started i was like fuck i'll give the people what they want because you know they i i, I was doing the lucy goosey story but then lucy goosey story is too long to do right after that i gotta do something quick to get a laugh to get them back and then it was just bombing so bad and i was like i was like and then i was like did i say this one already because i this is my fourth show you know second one of the night they don't know that but it's like m night Shyamalan in my head right now i'm like what is <laughs> happening what day is this deja vu or is this may uh i've been here before unplugged from the matrix <laughs> and then uh and they're like no and then i was like oh I'm just bombing then, huh? And I was like, well, <laughs> fuck this story. And then I just went into other quicker jokes and got them back. But then someone was like, no, I do the loosey goosey. I was like, I was doing it. No one was fucking responding. I was like, why don't you make a peep next time, asshole? And then I end up doing it again. And then it, it, I closed out with it and it, and it and it ripped pretty good this time, thank God, because it was the last one. But then... uh I, ha I had to get them one more time, you know? <laughs> so I was like, hey, I'll be outside, um, you know, slanging hoodies and, and, and pictures, hugs, handshakes, you know? And then, uh, you know, I was like, I'm not gonna not, or uh, no, and then I was like, I'll be giving out handshakes, hugs, and photos. And this guy will be right next to me and he'll be, uh, he'll finger blast you in your asshole if you want. <laughs> so I was like, if you want a picture with me or get finger fucked by that guy right there, come say hi to us. And then I was like, I went to the bouncer. I was like, hey, maybe stand by me out there because I think this guy might try to get me. You know? <laughs> Papa didn't raise no bitch. He was a big dude too. I was like, I'm going to die. That's what you got to do though. I don't care. I don't care. What am I going to be a bitch? Am I going to say, oh, no, I didn't stand my... No, I'm going to take a shiv to the riv and have a story. And I'm going to talk about it on my podcast. <laughs> you know? Like, people do stupid stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he was scary. Yeah, he could have had a gun. Who cares? The pain's <laughs> over if he shoots you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just kidding. That was too dark, too dark. <laughs> Or the pain just started. Oh! <laughs> You're like, I thought I was in pain. I want to live now more than ever, but my gallbladder's out. I biffed it, God. I biffed it. One more chance? Put me in the middle of a volcano. Shoot me out of some lava. The next life, the next life, you know. <laughs> I want to be magma. Nobody wants to be magma. You don't want to be organic, fertile soil? Being botanical gardens? Making orchids and all sorts of wild shit. That tropical soil. Nobody wants to be soil. Nobody wants to be volcanic glass rock that eventually turns into the most fertile land known to earth. Tough crowd. Tough crowd, <laughs> huh? <laughs> what a weird guy I am. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the weed's kicking in, huh? <laughs> oh. Am I making sense? Am I M. Night Shyamalan movie right now? Have I lost my rocker? A lot of notes on that one. Fuck off. I just sometimes will drive down the street and just like cuss at people with anger and rage. But like sweet, innocent souls, you know, it's like, fuck you, man. And then we laugh. But I do not know. I'm in my car. They can't hear it. They can't, you know what I mean? <laughs> fuck you. I'll just, I'll just flip off like a red light. Be like, fuck you. All right, you know, be like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck this. You know, you guys don't do that. You don't just 
drive with rage. <laughs> and it's like, man, fuck this system. What is this shit? Fucking. You might need some ayahuasca. No. Everybody does that. You don't scream and punch the roof of your car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Somebody doesn't drink enough coffee then. <laughs> Hello. What else happened in New York? Oh, my God. The, everything was just funny, too. Uh, the setup to get into Emma Wilman's apartment. There's a fob. Uh, they, they stashed it in a planter in the dirt and I just had to dig for a plastic bag and get it out and it was just hilarious. I was like, I look how I look. This was after traveling and missing a flight. I'm I'm disheveled is the word. And uh, I'm digging in soil for a plastic baggie to get a plastic, you know what I mean? I just look like a crackhead digging in the <laughs> dirt with two luggages. Like, oh, that guy lives on the street. <laughs> That's his life. That's his home. No, I'm a successful headlining comedian. That's my merch. That's also my merch. Only a quarter of the bag is my stuff. I bring three underwears, one jeans, two t-shirts. It's all merch. That's why everyone goes, oh, you travel light. I'm like, if they only knew. It's laughable. Like, my my stuff is one, 20% of that. Not, yeah, 20. Oh, my toiletry bag, 20, 25. That's, the, that's it. Oh, that's hilarious. And, uh, fuck, I forgot. That's it. Just, just, oh, New York's brutal too. No, I did it wrong. Cause I went to go hang out and then these clubs, they don't have, there's, it's New York. They don't have a hangout. Uh, the seller does next door. They have a restaurant, but I was like, Hey, I want to go in that club and hang out. And they're like, there's, they were, I've, I had my tail tucked between my legs but I know, I know it's that way. Like, I know if the comedy store, I mean, if New York comics go to the Laugh Factory and they don't have somebody walk them in, they're not getting in because there's nowhere for them to hang. And then I didn't, I was just by myself. And I was like, oh, there's, I just said to the bouncer, like, oh, there's nowhere to hang. There's no, like, bar or green room. Or, and they're like, no. And then I hit up my buddy. I was like, was this guy being a dick? And he's like, no, there's, there's like, you stand against the wall. You know, there's no, I was like, you guys hang suck, you know? <laughs> I just wanted to go hang with some comic. I ran into Josh Adam Myers, but he was running to a spot. It was very short-lived. And uh, but it's in, and then I just ended up eating next to the cellar. And I saw people running through, but they're going to do spots. I just saw like three or four New York cats all in all running by, though. I was like, but then I was in my fault, too. I was literally, I didn't hit, I didn't say, hey, I'm in New York. Let's hang. I just, well, I wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> I was just laid over one night because I missed my flight because of technology. Oh, I didn't finish that story. So I checked all alarms and timers, and I kept setting like one-minute timers and one-minute alarms. No sound, no sound, no sound. I looked it up on the Internet, and I just did a hard reset, and then it started working. And that's why I was like, no one will ever believe that. So I just told everyone I missed my flight by 20 minutes, which was true. I woke up. Yeah, yeah. I missed my flight. What does it matter how I missed it? What am I going to say? Actually, Apple, Steve Jobs got mad at me <laughs> for saying his bad things he did. And I, I I, did say that to a few people, and they're like, that has actually happened to me. Uh, Sadie, it's happened to her one time, and then it happened to, I forgot, someone in New York. And like, no one ever believed you, but that has happened to me once. And now I ordered a a digital analog clock. I was the worst feeling in my life. Like, I know I look how I look and I drink weed and shit, but if anyone knew how I operate, like, I'm like a survivalist. Like, I have backup batteries for the batteries in the flashlight in my car. I have a pocket knife right here, but I have a, a, a window break punch right there. I have a backup hoodie in the trunk. You know, I have backup trunks, flip-flops, dodgeball. Like, I like being prepared. So like I'm not I'm I did 59 cities and I never missed one flight, you know, and that was insanity. That was insanity. I'm just saying it was it was that fucking phone that I threw on the ground. Good riddance. <laughs> but now I'm like, all right, well now I'm getting the battery backed up, analog, fucking no Wi-Fi alarm clock, no technology, 
If it ain't got electricity, it got juice. We got we got Duracell. I ain't missing no flight again. That was a bad look. I, I, this look and missing a flight is a bad look. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I started drinking a lot of coffee again. It's my favorite. I don't give a fuck that I've been running worse. (laughs) I don't give a fuck. It's worth it. Have you tasted it? Have you smelled it? If they said, if, if, I don't know why, but this is one of those childish games. If, if you had to give up coffee or pussy, what would you give up? (laughs) I mean, there's fleshlights, you know? (laughs) Have you fucked decaf? (laughs) Have you fucked with decaf? No. The devil's in the decaf. That's why I put the D on it. It's disgusting. I'll take my flashlight. (laughs) And my organic espresso. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, I'm really sorry, ladies. Roe versus Wade, that's very unfortunate. Uh, that's disgusting. I believe all uh, you should have complete uh, body autonomy. And I believe all human beings should have complete body autonomy. I don't want any hypocrites on either sides. I know it's not about that right now. So that's all I have to say about that. But everyone should have control over their human body, especially fucking women. Jesus Christ. And I don't want to go dark. I'm really sorry. It's a sad day. I grew up with all women. If you saw my family functions when I was a child, there was two men there. It was me and the trash guy that was picking up the trash that just was <laughs> driving by at the time. It was just me. All the men left. There's too many women. They went, ah, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> no, they all went to the garage. They drank and smoked cigars, and I and I hung with the women's, and we did tea parties and played with Barbies. And that's why I wear pink now. <laughs> no. Um, wouldn't exchange it for the world because I had my firecracker father giving me knives and guns and I had my barbers with the chichis and nails polish so you know I could, I could get I could paint your nails and I could protect pa 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 <laughs> and this that's great that's love that's what it's about change your attitude I could have I will oh that too, just that whole stoicism, stoicism, whatever the fuck that I get to, it does work, man. I make fun of it as I practice it because it's kind of barf, you know? I know what it is. It's kind of one of those things if you're in the... Dun- when I was in the depths of hell... Sorry, scam like he's heckling me and it's still connected to my computer. I got to figure out how to disconnect that. <laughs> um. Oh, no. Oh, I remember when I was so depressed and so fucked up on like cocaine and Oxycontins and alcohol and I would see happy people and they just made me want to puke. I was like, go fuck yourself. You're fucking happy, dog. I'm on Oxycontin, cocaine and whiskey and I'm still sad. What the fuck are you on? I ought to try that one. Now, fuck your head, man. Oh, you can't say that. Just kidding. Do what works for you. Try mushrooms, you fucking pussy. <laughs> Jesus, bunch of cucks out there. Put down this. Put down what the teacher told you to take. Go out in the soil and foil, foil the forge around a little while and eat a mushroom. Eat a mushroom. You're welcome. Be a renegade, you fucking pussies. Boy, I'm going to get some heat for that one, aren't I? <laughs> Craig called all the weak people pussy. No, I love you, and I'm 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 one of you, So and I need the head meds, but I take mushrooms because God made that. God made that. The devil made your little things. Yeah, I said it. A lot of people get mad at that. Look up if mass shooters were on head meds. Go down that one. That's all I'll say about that. One gem. All of them. Anyways, uh, how's your begonia garden going? (laughs) (laughs) 
people on head meds. Obviously, if they're helping you, I, I, I do have to come back on this one because I do know some people that got on some more mellow, uh, more flatlining, you know. I know some motherfuckers that took some hardcore shit and killed themselves, so I have some thoughts on that shit when they're getting off of stuff. I also have a friend that was, I'm not going to name them anymore because they're so scary, they literally will delete my YouTube channel. Uh, one of my buddies was getting off of one of the big ones, and he was on it for like 10, 15 years. I think I said this before, but he started to put cigars out on his arms. So I was like, hey, buddy, maybe you should get back on them. But you know what I mean? <laughs> he shouldn't have to put out cigars on his arm to get off of them is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, but I know some people on some mellow yellows and it did really help them out because they were a fucking shit show. And that's dope. So some of them can help some people. But I look at them as a band-aid covering up a deep wound. Let's go do some ayahuasca with Ron White and uh, heal our demons. And... Uh, he truly heal. Get to the root. Booze coming after fingers again. I don't know if you saw that. And uh, that's that's my piece on that. Hmm. Just wondering if I went too hard there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> People get angry. Why do they get angry? Because it hits close to home. And everybody's sad. That's a new song. That's a new jingle. <laughs> I just know too many people on them, good and bad, mostly bad, or mostly not solutions, mo deep-rooted solutions, just comatose. I keep making this smoothie. I'm happy now. <laughs> I'll keep packing these groceries. I'm happy. <laughs> I'll clean this toilet after killing it last night. Maybe we'll bleat the names of them. Um, yeah, that change your attitude really, really, really does work. Boy, we that's how what started all that. That's what started all that. Oh, the positives spark that dark spiral. Because I was hanging out with these fools. I was smoking out with some fans. I smoked out with like three posses of fans. Also, it was hilarious. I was walking with two big ass dudes with beards and long hair to walk them to my room to sell them a t-shirt because I only bust the hoodies out because I want to make more money because I, you know, because my, I, because I'm not rich yet, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's basically, I feel bad saying that, but I was like, no, I need, I need to fix my mouth and buy a house. Anyways, I get to, I get to hustle. And uh, it's just so funny that I'm walking with just, just two huge dudes and it was fine. They were great. They bought a t-shirt, smoked them out. It was fine. But I was like, if ever, if anyone wanted to murder me, then it's like, it's just, <laughs> yeah, come on. Come back to my room, guys. Uh, and it's just hilarious. And then I even said that. I was like, this is so funny. They're like, I was like, you guys are just kidnap me and murder me. Like, nah, man, we'll protect you. And I was like, I know. That's why I'm walking with you. They're like, we'll, we'll thwart off evil. Like, I know my people. God bless you, gentlemen. And I smoked out. Uh, with these two dudes, where the fuck were they from? Look, they got that. They were in New York, Staten Island, and we we're chopping it up. And one had like 14 years sober, and we had a similar path. He went even. He went a little harder than me, but he was like, "Yeah, dog." He's like, "Yeah, I lost all my." Because I went, "Yeah, I know, I got you know." Anyway, he's like, "Hey, none of these are real. <laughs> these are fucking." It was. He was so dope. And he was all on the same page, and he brought up that get to, because I said like a negative thing. He's like, nah, 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 bro, you get to. And I was like, damn, dude. I was like, you follow me around? I've been ranting and raving about this bullshit. He's like, don't. He's like, it's, he's like, every morning, do your gratitude. But he had a thick New York accent, so everything was so <laughs> funny. He's like, do your fucking gratitude. So it was like sweet and positive, but with like said with like anger and aggression. I loved it, man. He was fucking dope. And this other dude he was with, they both hit me up on the gram. And he was funny, too. And he gave me this joke. And he said the funniest shit, bro. Normally, when people say, like, bar jokes, or I think it was his joke. And uh, 
I don't know what it was. It made me laugh. I'm scared to re regurgitate his joke and fuck up his joke. Cause I was, he's like, you could use that if you want. I was like, you do comedy, bro. Cause he made me gut laugh two, three times. I was like, damn, dude, that never happens. But he said, uh, cause I brought, I think I brought up, cause I was like, dude, I can't compete against Lionel Richie and man tits. Cause it, it, it was just also funny too. We shared a green room. Justin Hoff opens the green room door and it's just like, eight dudes with tits just standing there in g-strings getting ready for their drag show and it was he's like oh i'm just getting my camera you know because we're recording our sets it's just funny you know <laughs> he went honk honk <laughs> and then oh no i forgot where i was going rewind where was i the, the man titty made me laugh too hard help me out chris you were expl- you were saying how you can't compete with lionel richie and man oh tits. the dude's joke the dude's joke. No, see, you did it wrong. I'm gonna beat you after this podcast. The dude's joke is the colonel. I'm kidding, Chris. He looks at me <laughs> like I'm seriously mad at him. <laughs> he went, "What did I do? God damn it! I'm on weed oil. I'm joking. I'm really gonna hit Chris. <laughs> Why I ought? To... He is like his father. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, the his joke. He said, uh, I, Cause I was like, yeah, we're doing competing against Pride and Lionel and shit, and then and the Pride's killing us. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know what? Uh, my buddy just came out. He's he's been in the closet forty five years, man. And he's like, he came out and and then he said he's, oh, hang on, I'm gonna ruin it. <laughs> I've Gotta get the punchline right. This is the scary part. It's the easy one too. It's a layup. He said he came out of the closet 45 years, 45 years. And I was like, why didn't you tell me when you were sucking my dick or something like that? <laughs> it's so funny. I fucked it up. He did it better. I made it hacky because it was a hacky version of that. And he snuck it in. He snuck it in under the radar. He caught me. He left hooked me. I went, <laughs> I lost oxygen laughing. I ruined it. I'm sorry, sir. I admitted it though. I admitted it. I didn't ruin it. It just was way better because he did it. He did it perfect. It was like, pat pow. He snuck it in like Patrice O'Neill mid conversation. Oh, oh, a punchline. A punch. This guy. Nah. Don't ground. Don't ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, Justin and his girlfriend were cute as fuck. He talks about it in his act and on his social media and. So I'm gonna say, it. but he's he he's a he's a shorter dude, and he talks about it. And his girlfriend is a shorter chick, and I bring that up because, uh, literally and figuratively, this is the cutest fucking couple I've ever seen in my life. They're all sweet. Maybe I'll edit this part out. I'm just calling them, a, just making. I'm trying to give him a compliment. I'm just like, just fucking making fun of how <laughs> tiny he is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> is this good or is this bad? I don't even know. I love them. It's good. It's good. Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it. Whatever. He knows I love him. You know, it's scary <laughs> times out there. Okay, so back to the morning pages. I figured out my little system. So the morning pages is three pages, but I do a small book because I'm lazy. I don't want one of those college rule books. That's a lot of pages. That's That'll make me stop doing my pages. You could do post-its, too. I do the little square. This one that's this big, it's inch by inch. It's quickest <laughs> morning page. Love, love, love. Three words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do that. That's it. You know, maybe a little, little notebook like this. You know, just a slightly bigger, little half ones. And my shit is the, the old junkie with no teeth, my bold positive Pete, New York. That motherfucker, nah, dog. You got to fucking do it. You got to do your, your great. He said grateful first thing. And then so I turn my morning pages into page one grateful. And then Steve Harvey to, to, to uh, quote that Mr. Potato looking motherfucker. Uh, he says, uh, what are you grateful for? And then, I, you know, sometimes you're down. You're like, I'm not grateful for shit. Fuck you. I got a rash on my nuts again. What's to be grateful when my nuts burn? And then he goes, well, you're grateful. He, a, a contestant said that on his talk show. And he said, this is what you have to be grateful for. And that contestant was me. He said, you got, you're breathing. You're walking. You got all your limbs. You got all your fingers. You got hair. 
it's thinning, but you still got some. He didn't say that part. No. <laughs> <laughs> and he's and he lists like the obvious shit, and then you just go, oh yeah, all right, I could play your positive game. I like to play it with spite, you know. No, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. So first page, grateful for, and then the second page for me, it's the to to list to to to. <laughs> to do list oh, <laughs> shit i gotta do you know those things what do i have to do today god what work do you want from me shall i till the soil shall i grow food for the people because bill gates is buying all the land somebody else that bezos bought double nobody talks about luke's lethler <laughs> lex luther boy the wheels <laughs> kicking in isn't it <laughs> <Yes>. dicks lech <laughs> 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 I am off the rocker today. I make fun of my cat, and I realize I am a mirror to my cat. I am off my rocker. Mm-hmm. Lex Luther, Luke's Lexter. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck off. Mm-hmm. You know what I noticed though? If you follow the podcast and. Even when I'm sober, I still did all this. Even when I was 100% sober, no weed, no oh, yeah. CBD, no nothing. That's what I was like. I always blame the weed. I think it's more ADHD than anything. Because then I I finally read, I refused to read the, uh, I almost said instructions. And then I went to <laughs> ingredients. I almost read the instructions to ADHD. <laughs> I almost read the ingredients to ADHD. Uh, and I was like, oh, Jesus. Like, I have every uh, 90 percent of it i still think it's bullshit it's a label that they made up to give you speed to profit and kill your soul and your light that's what i believe because i'm a, i'm out there but uh it is still is a real thing that people have you know i think they're just like yeah let's sling a meth boys <laughs> Let's make a couple billion off these sad souls. And then they'll work real hard and make a brake pads. Yeah. Callahan Auto Pots. <laughs> that's a Tommy Boy reference. Know your history. Know your history. And uh, that's that's the sad reality. Uh, how I think. Because my pineal gland is open. I put a little shizzyliziet. Shizzyliziet. That one's a hard one to pronounce. So don't don't come at me with that. <laughs> shizzyliziet. I rubbed a little shizzy a little yet. There's all these vitamins you could take to open up your third eye. Because it's calcified because of the fluoride in the water. If you don't believe me, watch uh, Stanley Kubrick's uh, d- uh, documentary film called Dr. Strangelove with uh, Peter Sellers. It's a great flick. Dimitri, Dimitri. I didn't mean to non- launch the nukes. I said nonch. I always switch the first letter of the two words. Mm. Letter. Letter. I said leather. No. Oh, it's just occurring to me, if, you, if you're dyslexic, that that does explain a lot of the word flubs. Mm. And I always thought dyslexia was more about writing it down. Speech, too. But, yeah. Yeah. But, well, we I shouldn't have been laughing words at together. you this whole time. You guys see? See, <laughs> I try to tell you who's special over here and you nobody's listening. Pretty high functioning special dude, you know, <laughs> got a hot girl. Whew. Hey, if you got special needs, you still can get a girl with a fat ass or dude, whatever you want, whatever you want. You want a fat, flat ass, flat ass, <laughs> fat ass, whatever. Get after it because there's high functioning people out here. Um, making sure I did all of it. How long we've been rolling there, Tiger? Uh, just shy of an hour. Well, that's good. Cause if you would have said twenty four, that would have been a horror movie for me. I would have been like, that I am too high. <laughs> As I was like, that had to have been at least forty. You know, I bounce around, but I felt like I finished all the circles. I can't help bouncing around because of my ADHD and dyslexia, but I 
have manic a little ocd where i'm like you have to finish the stories and then i was like try to finish all stories did i that's i need you to help me keep on track of that i think so so. he's he's this guy's it's hard to follow time it's hard to follow space that i know it's hard to follow chris (laughs) try living in here i'm like have you tried living with it (laughs) you try organizing your life wait what's your third page of your morning pages do we do that oh the free flow okay yeah so first see there you go now we're talking that's what you're for your little encyclopedia just kidding he's my heart (laughs) he's my heart he's everything um the first page is grateful for second page to do list the third page is free flow whatever uh and when I first was told to do the morning pages, you know, I have my father in me. I'm like, God, you fucking pussies. Stupid. And then you do it. And then also the lazy guy is like, I don't want to. You resist. And also like the, I don't even know what I'm going to write about. What? Are, like the, the just literally like, I don't know. What? And then when uh, my lady told me like, no, you can literally write like I am writing on this page. And it sounds so stupid. You, you, if you can't start off with that and it'll just go because i went at it too with that and then you just sit there you don't it could be like little lightning bolts of information you sit there with the coffee and you just go you write down hate anger rage love all of it that's why it's dope because you know some days i'm like oh i love my girl so much she gets a bit i just oh i just fuck it. i'm gonna go put my nose in i love her so much <laughs> and then other days i'll fuck it <laughs> You know, <laughs> did you fucking let that you fucking didn't put the ketchup lid all the way on and I squirted my face with ketchup you know I'll fucking kill you <laughs> and it's good to get it out because then you write it out and then you're like it's gone it's gone and then you don't hold it and harbor it for two fucking weeks and she does something in the ground and you're like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you're like what's that about the ketchup bitch <laughs> the ketchup from a month ago i held it in i held it in and i added to it layers 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 this is a five layer ketchup dip right here pa, 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 pa. and then you say some crazy shit because you're fucking nuts and you're like oh baby i don't mean it come here come here i'll make you pizza it's frozen i didn't make it from scratch but i heat it up in the microwave for like four to six seconds it's a bit <laughs> oh i tried frank pp's pizza and everyone says it's the best pizza in the world that new haven frank pp's it's all right i mean it's good it's good it was so good but it was like you can't say it's the best pizza in the world and then i try it and i'm like wait it's in connecticut yeah they say new haven uh New Haven is known. They say there's these two places that battle out for the best pizza ever. It's supposed to be way better than New York. It's supposed to be this. And I try it. And I'm like, all right, that's good. There's a warehouse in Gardena that I get pizza from that tastes just as good as that. Eat Italia. Yeah, I'm plugging you, Eat Italia. Now give me a free mascarpone. <laughs> <laughs> give me some fucking manicotti. Hey. Where's my shells with ricotta? Mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I just question what? So you, you your morning pages, you write them, and then you get a bunch of stuff out. Is there any like creative benefit that you feel? Yes, you can get some uh, bits out of it, which is uh, very beneficial for artists as well as ideas for business. Uh, I don't care if you have a fucking coffee shop or you're a, you're a suit shop, whatever. I just bought a suit. <laughs> the suits are on the mind. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it just, it'll, it, it can spawn an idea for business, you know, be like, oh, I'll be thinking about comedy and be like, damn, that's a great idea for a food truck. Okay, well, my comedy pops off and I get fucking consistent residual income, I could fund under businesses to make more money to buy apartment complexes to get money to buy my family homes and no one ever has to worry ever again that's the goal farmland grow your own food they're coming after your seeds (laughs) they're coming after your seeds your fruit seeds and your nut seeds too (laughs) 
<laughs> Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world. Oh, my last note. I was like, I need something to end on. Did I give a shout out to JP Noda and his cigar blunt joint things? Uh, no. I love this man. JP Noda, you are the best. This guy is... You know how much weed I used to smoke and then I require, required I required to start back up again? I retired for nine years. He's if I kept going and re- retained all the data and information of all the weeds I ever smoked. He's got it all. He's like, uh, he's, he just has, a, he, he, ma- he rolled these cigars. Oh, I got one in the drawer. Boo, I'm so sorry. I have to get it. Um, I'll get it. Is it? Oh yeah, you get it. It's in a big tall plastic tube. Big tallest one. Yeah, white cap. Yeah, throw that at me. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't I, I I'm not a slave driver. I I just thank you for your work, Chris. I just I can't move cuz of the microphone and the cat and so I have to say, "Get me my blunt, bitch." Bar whore. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't get it out. Okay, gravity. Can you can you throw me one of my knives right there on the little one? Yeah, 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 throw me that one. Fan sent me this one. I caught it dodgeball. <laughs> always have I have uh one, two, three, four knives. Always have to have knives nearby. And I know I don't have one right on my pocket, but I only have my belt or shoes on, right? <laughs> I'm not ready for the day. You know, but I still have four near me because I'm a man. You wouldn't leave the house. I wouldn't leave the house without it, you know. Who doesn't need a little mini switchblade? That's fun. You know, you do coke, you go, you go, hang on, ladies, and you shit. And now you scared them all away because you have a knife. Because you have a knife, you psychopath. (laughs) That was going a different direction, didn't you? Thought that was a joke. No, I definitely did cocaine uh, off of uh, my knives, and everybody did because you're on cocaine. And you're nuts. You're like, hell yeah, I'll do coke off a Bowie knife. Let's do it off my butthole next. <laughs> it's true. He rolls these things. This is a joint. This is a joint. This is not cigar wrap. JP Note, I love you. When I get my money right, we're going to start a company. And we're going to sell these. This is some boss shit. This is the best thing I ever smoked in my life. I almost don't want to put this out there right now because someone's going to steal this idea. Give me, give me six months. Let me get some money. We'll get a little weed company going. And I, oh fuck! All right, maybe a year. I got to pay my my, my my mouth. I forgot I got the dentist tomorrow. Oh, yeah. there goes the money. Anyways, hey, subscribe to Community Service Podcast. <laughs> this guy, this is this is he, he puts these little symbols on him. Can you see that dollar sign? Yeah. The other one had a G on it. I smoked it by myself. I was like, I'll share this. I took one puff. It tasted. Like Snoop Loop, that earthy OG Kush, that, that, that where you just hit it and you go, nom, 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 nom. I can smell it from here. Yeah, I know. Great. It smells great. We'll smoke it after. Well, you got a lot of editing to do. I don't know. <laughs> and then, and then I was like, I don't think I'll like this. It's too much. I, you just smoke a little inch of it and it goes out. You know, you can smoke all of it. That's excessive. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit much. Um, and I just felt like a boss. And I was like, this is a vibe. I get it. I get it now. And I love it because he agrees. Okay, I know the blunt smokers out there, I've already done this rant. I I get why you like blunts, but you must admit they're harsh on the lungs. You know, I used to smoke Garcia Vegas in high school. I was 17, hawking up resin. Like, uh, it hurt. It fucking hurts. This doesn't hurt. This is why I love this. And you get the flavor of the Kush way more. You have no more strong tobacco flavor overriding. Motherfuckers will be like, I like tobacco. I like the flavor. Fuck that. I like OG Kush. You're going to, Big Mama Earth going to grow OG Kush. Then you're going to put some pesticide tobacco wacko on it. Make it taste like asshole. Fuck you, man. JP Nota Solution. These, and then you know, like, we fit more in the blunt. You can fit. Did you see this fat cock little nubber? That's over an he eighth. Can, in there. Oh, no. This one's 4Gs, I think. He rode me a 3G and a 4G. Damn. The 3G was this, the, the show, cause this is packed. This is solid. Oh, this is thick. Yeah. 
Mm. I had this in my pocket. It didn't even fold. This is... God bless you, JP. I love you, man. I guess... We'll what just... is it wrapped in? Just paper? Um, Yeah. He does videos on how he rolls them. Yeah, it's just black zigzag paper is all it is. Maybe a couple, a couple wraps of it. And uh, he rolls these little chongers that make you feel like a fucking boss, dude. And then you're just high as fuck. I think I have to quit smoking weed in the fall, you know? Just I, the fall? I cut back. That's what my doctor told me. <laughs> I was like, I abuse marijuana. He said, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll scale back in the fall. And I said, I like you, doctor. <laughs> I got a doctor like Ron White. He's a good doctor. Because he's a realistic doctor. Those motherfuckers be like, we got to get you off all this right now ASAP. You say that to a junkie, they're like, I'm out the window. I'm gone. He be like, I keep shooting up. Just do a little less. He be like, I like this guy. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> but what is the w last week of summer going to look like then when you know fall is coming? I hope I don't have shows is all <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> I don't know, Chris. We'll see. Maybe that's when I'll... I want to uh, I want to follow the Ron White. I want to keep smoking my weed because I need it, and it's made by God. It ain't no thing. I want to cut back and hopefully use it correctly. I don't think that's possible until I go to some hypnotherapy and ayahuasca healing and cleansing and purging of some demons. I literally got sad and worried because I, I was I know I know I'm gonna do it now. I've been one ayahuasca has been calling me forever. It wasn't until Ron White put the nail in the coffin. But I was just like weeping. I was like, I don't want to fight my demons. I was like, there's too many of them or he's too big. It was just like, how many? How many? Anyways, go fight your demons, motherfuckers. And people say they don't have them. I don't know if you've seen the state of the world. I'm pretty <laughs> sure most about all of you humanity. <laughs> I know they're different sizes and different things. That's why I was like, oh, God. God. Anyhow, that's my shit. You know what it is. I'm a fucking hippie, and I've had too many friends on too many corporate cocksucker drugs. And had too many bad things happen. So I'm, for that reason, I'm out. Um... Shout out to freedom of speech while it still exists, and I hope it continues. And uh, that's about it. Don't flag me. Don't censor me. Don't demonetize me. YouTube, let me speak my piece. <laughs> I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in, liking, and subscribing. Go get your some. Uh, don't do drugs, but if you do, make sure it's organic and God made them. And JP Noda rolled them. Um, and that's it. I love you all so much. <laughs> God bless, vibrate higher, all that shit. Buddha, Allah, you know what it is, energy. We ain't got no labels. And uh, fuck, fuck off to those haters. Keep on floating, baby. Peace out.